I want to say good morning again, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome Governor Justice and our dignitaries here on stage. The groundbreaking of the upgrading of West Virginia Route 10. I'd like to welcome you to our groundbreaking this morning, as well as our viewers around the world on Governor Jim Justice's website and the YouTube that you can watch around the world. We appreciate having you tuned in today as well. Today we're celebrating the first four construction projects, the first of one of four uh, construction projects to upgrade and improve this important road here in southern West Virginia. I'm Randy Dameron, proud to say I'm an employee of the West Virginia Department of Transportation. In a little few minutes, we're going to have some photo opportunities with uh, Governor Justice and other distinguished guests with the shovels as we officially break ground today, although our contractor, who you'll hear from here in just a few minutes, was so eager to get started, you drove through a work zone to get here. They started yesterday, and we appreciate that. Also, understand that uh, folks here from Man that they're celebrating their 100th birthday in the town of Man today. Congratulations. Who's from Man? Any dignitaries? Okay, we're going to welcome those dignitaries here in a moment. But as we begin, I'd like to open with an invocation, and I'm glad to introduce a DOH colleague who works here in Logan County. This is Larry Hubbard from the Man Church of Christ. Larry? At this time, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity, Father, to be here. And Lord, we're thankful, Father, for each and every opportunity we have, Father, to stand in front of a crowd and pray to you. Father, as we come to you in prayer this morning, we're asking you, Father, to bless this program and bless the roads to prosperity. Father, we're thankful for each and every opportunity that we have, Lord, to better our state. And Father, we ask, Lord, that you'll uh, bless this uh, project here, Father, on Route 10. We pray, Father, that each and every one that is uh, involved with it, Lord, that you would watch over them, God, and grant them grace, Father. We're thankful, Father, each and every day we're allowed to be on your footstool. And Father, we ask you to go with us at this time, Lord. And uh, we're thankful for the governor, Father. We ask you to bless him, Father, for his efforts. And we do pray this in the name of Jesus, and amen. Thank you, Larry. You know, we should give thanks every day to live in the greatest country in the world and um, never forget it and take it for granted. I'd like to recognize active military or any veterans in the audience. If you'd please stand. How about a nice round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? And if you'll remain standing, I'm going to ask everyone else to stand now for the Pledge of Allegiance. And um, lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance is from Boy Scout Troop 217, just down the road in Man. This is Donnie Wolford. Maybe seated. Thank you, Don. Well, I saw a show of hands here, some folks from Man, but I do want to recognize uh, some community leaders. Lane, you want to turn this down just a little bit? Thank you. Uh, elected leaders in the audience uh, from uh, any municipalities here in Logan County, if you could please stand. Just uh, yeah, let us recognize you. How about um, officials from Logan County, <laughs> Logan County government? our state and elected leaders. All right, very good, thank you. Uh, employees of the West Virginia Division of Highways. Guys, let us recognize you. And I couldn't help but notice um, Paul Maddox, our former uh, Secretary of Transportation in the audience. Thank you for being here, Paul. I know you are involved in this project. Our first speaker this morning from E.L. Robinson, the consultant on this job. They specialize, by the way, in professional engineering, surveying, landscape architecture, and infrastructure services. And they uh, employ more than 150 professionals and support personnel located in seven offices throughout West Virginia and Ohio. We thought it'd be nice to hear from the consultant on the upgrading of West Virginia Route 10. Would you please welcome uh, the uh, 
back the president of E.L. Robinson, Mr. Ed Robinson, to the podium. Ed. Thank you, Randy. Uh, Randy told me that this was the first time that they had ever allowed a consultant to speak. Well, it may be the only time after today. Um, Governor, I just want to thank you for your roads to prosperity. And you can see it happening. We're creating, you're cre you created, when you walked and drove across the state of West Virginia selling this program, you've created thousands of great paying jobs to the citizens of West Virginia. And for that, he needs a round of applause. <laughs> Secretary Smith, thank you for implementing the governor's program. And we appreciate you. We appreciate being your partner for about 40 years now. But Edward, thank you for bringing your checkbook. <laughs> I was kidding with Edward when uh, Edward Stevens from the Federal Highway Typically, when you meet someone, you shake their hand like that. When you meet Edward, you sort of shake his hand like that, wanting his money. And Aaron Gillespie, thank you for your leadership at the Division of Highways, the State Highway Engineer. But, Governor, I must tell you, you've got an employee in your midst here who was, I call him, it's a football analogy, he was a pulling guard on this job. What I mean by that, I mean, that's a great analogy for Jimmy Wriston. Jimmy pulled out and leveled the field so that we were able to get this project done in, in record time, 99 days. And by the way, we were given notice on December the 6th. A few things happened around that time, like Christmas and New Year's. We sort of observed them, but from afar. Our employees were uh, on, on duty on, and got on it right away. But um, one thing I must mention, I mean, this is, we're celebrating it today through Logan County, and we're breaking that ground. But we designed 69 miles of upgrades through Wyoming and Mercer County. And oh, by the way, there was no mapping. I mean, there was, there was blank sheets of paper and a little rain came. And uh, by the way, Governor, as a part of all this, we got a mobile scanner. And I can say words, and I really don't understand. I hope the equipment's OK. And you, you can say words about that. But it's sort of like Ghostbusters to me, because I can't do it. I can just visualize it. But imagine this. We could put it on your SUV. You could drive down the highway with somebody in the front going about 30 miles an hour. You'd have to really slow down. About 30 miles an hour. And in that 69 miles, it collected 18 billion points. It collects 1 million points a second. Well, that became a little problematic. I call it the angry cloud because we had to go into that cloud and pull that information down and put it on paper. Now that was somewhat difficult to do. We had to go out and get everybody we could get together. And I tell you, our people were willing to do it. It's tough to get other people to work Christmas and New Year's. But we were able to convince some of them. But we got it done. But then once we got the mapping done, then we had to go out and design the operational improvements. Well, that included 17 bridges. That included box culverts. And one day when this is all complete, you'll see the, the passing lanes. There are three major slides that had to be upgraded. And again, it happened in 99 days, which you can ask anybody in the Division of Highways that's darn near impossible to do. But we appreciate a challenge. We appreciate working with and for the Division of Highways. And 
the completion of this project will truly enhance the safety for the citizens of this area and those that travel through this area. And it will try it will shorten the time driving time between Man and Kegley. And it will it's a two twelve foot pavements, three where we could get them, three two three foot paved shoulders. I mean can you imagine? Um, you just don't see that driving the secondary roads uh, in the state of West Virginia. And Governor, there's going to be a problem. Every delegate and every senator that drives this road after it's complete, they're going to be knocking on your door, wanting that in their backyard. So get, I'm just telling you, get ready. It's going to happen. And I want to thank particularly the Robinson Engineering people that are here today. Uh, Paul Maddox, who helped uh, work and get this project. Um, Scott LaRose, who managed the project. Fahima Maud, who designed these bridges. Uh, Tom Rayburn, who uh, fought around with this angry cloud for uh, several weeks, trying to collect all and get all this information out of it. But we did have to go get partners. Dakota Consulting, who managed the environmental TRC, who helped with that. Carpenter Marty, we appreciate you. And uh, Art King, you know that every two inches out there, we have a point. So if you uh, find something you need, ask Tom Rayburn. He'll uh, work with that angry cloud to get it out and give it to you. But Art King's a great contractor, and we're, we're so pleased that, that he's doing the work. Thank you very much. Thanks, Ed. Well, now, speaking of the contractor, Canal Stone Company's reputation for completing large-scale quality projects has made it one of the region's leading highway contractors. It distinguishes itself by maintaining an extensive fleet of heavy equipment, i.e., beside me here, which will make a great photo backdrop, just say. Combined with experienced professionals, they're well-suited for managing time-sensitive large production projects. And as I mentioned, they were so eager to get started on West Virginia Route 10, they started yesterday. They are definitely up and ready for the task at hand of upgrading West Virginia Route 10. Would you please welcome the CEO from Canola Stone, Mr. Art King. Thank you, Randy. Uh, I've been to several of these, and uh, this is the first time that they've ever had the contractor or the consultant say anything. Well. I didn't read Randy's email yesterday. I didn't read it till about 35, 40 minutes ago, so here I am. But uh, first, I'd like to thank uh, the governor and Secretary uh, uh, Smith for supporting and pushing this Roads to Prosperity program through. It's projects like this that give us the opportunity to bid, and if we're successful, go build the project. And in that process, create uh, uh, jobs for the local area. In fact, uh, our superintendent is uh, from Logan County. He's been with our company for a number of years. Uh, in fact, for a long time, if you count the time that he's left and come back. But uh, being from Logan County, the way our folks hire, for the most part, is through referrals. So it's through his network of people that he will get the the uh, the employees for to build this project and because he's from Logan County that's where his network is so as a result of that you'll see that a lot of the people that will be on this project are local and uh, uh, we hope that um, that you'll be kind to them and, and accept the fact that we are going to have to hold up traffic, you know, in order to get this job done, but uh, we promise you we'll be as efficient and as fast as we can to get this completed. And just as a quick note, uh, we're no strangers to, to Logan County. Uh, we have built uh, two of the four-lane projects uh, coming into man, and we just completed uh, the uh, access road at uh, Chief Cornstalk uh, last year, which uh, I know that saves a lot of time getting in and out of the park. 
uh, in getting back to the quarter. But uh, uh, not being the politician that my friend Ed Robinson is here, uh, I'll conclude my remarks now. Thank you. The consultant and the contractor and the DOH on the stage at the same time. It's great. West Virginia Division of Highways has a longstanding relationship with our federal highways partner and enjoy a, their innovative approach in advancing the federal aid program to our state. So please welcome our federal highways partner. He's the West Virginia Administrator, Federal Highways, Mr. Edward Steve. Ed. Thank you, Randy. I guess I'm not sure it's good morning or good afternoon. It's still morning. But good morning uh, to the governor. Again, good to see you. Right. We got to stop meeting like this. Right. <laughs> but uh, me more. Me more. Uh, appreciate your vision that was already stated. Uh, to Secretary Smith, uh, my major transportation partner, thank you so much for a great opportunity to be before you all and to my other partners, both in the consulting industry and the contracting industry. And to all of you all, uh, it's just great to be here. Glad to see my good friend Paul Maddox. It's good to see you. Uh, I just want to come before you this morning and just say thank you. This is an awesome opportunity to say a great job that is being done here in West Virginia in this particular area of the country. I think it's a great opportunity. I, the last time I was here about a year ago, up on the other end, a man, and I was really, really nervous because of the safety features and because of the the uh, the contour of the, of the roadway. Here is really a great opportunity to increase safety, which I think is a great, great opportunity for all of us for the commitment of West Virginia DOH and Federal Highway number one commitment is safety. And I think this project and the uh, upcoming projects are great opportunities. Uh, one of the things that I love about the partnership between DOH uh, and FSW as well as uh, our consultant is we look at the environmental commitments. And to look at this beautiful area here and to honor those environmental commitments to minimize any type of disturbance uh, is an awesome, awesome task. So uh, it's very uh, a great pleasure to be before you again. One thing I do want to say, I share with, um, I think with Secretary Smith, I worked in six states over my past 16 years with Federal Highway, West Virginia's sixth six state. And one state I worked in, they, uh, they did similar to what the governor vision was. They wanted to get a half cent sale tax to upgrade their pavement across the state. But one of the things I found that after about three or four months, they started complaining. The citizens started complaining because work was not being done. That's not the case here. Governor, the work that West Virginia DOH is doing under the leadership of Tom and your vision, uh, I hear nothing but great things, and we have nothing but great things to say about the state, about the contractors, about the consultant, and all of the industry partners. So we just are very proud of this and just a part in coming for, uh, for Ed Robertson just so that uh, uh, we clear on this. If you need money, here's the man. <laughs> Tom and I work very well, and Federal Highway is always a part of anything that we can do to help make West Virginia the number one state in the country is what we want to do. So again, thank you all for the opportunity. Looking forward to, our, as the governor said, more opportunity for joint ventures like this. Thank you all. Thank you, Edward. Here, here, getting things done, absolutely. Our next speaker has worked uh, actually in bettering roads all across the nation in his former previous jobs. He's committed, truly committed. He's hardworking, committed to better roads here in West Virginia. And he's making great strides in the Department of Transportation. He's getting things done, as Edward said, like upgrading West Virginia Route 10. He's the secretary of our West Virginia Department of Transportation, as well as the commissioner of the Division of Highways, Mr. Tom Smith. Thank you, Randy. Governor Justice, other distinguished guests, what a great day to be in Logan County. I have two quick things to do today. Uh, the first is I want to tell you what's very special about this project. And then the second thing is I have the honor to introduce my boss, uh, Governor Justice, who will be speaking to you in just a minute. 
Uh, the, the first thing I'll say about this project that's really neat is it's the first big non-traditional type of project in the governor's Roads to Prosperity program. Over the last seven months, we've done a lot of work on the interstates, resurfacing. We've done the reconstruction on the interstates. We've done a lot of bridge replacements. But this is the first one where you're going to see some major dirt moving. We're anxious to get that type of project going. So this one is the first one of those. Many more to come. Um, and so that's number one. Number two, this is an example of wonderful, great engineering. Robinson Engineering here uh, has done a great job of squeezing absolutely everything you can and efficiency out of this existing roadway. I, I do want to recognize uh, who Ed recognized, uh, Jimmy Riston of our office and Aaron Gillespie, our state highway engineer, who have worked with Robinson's uh, engineers to get stuff going. Also, uh, uh, Ed Robinson and Paul Maddox, uh, uh, former secretary, that this is an example of great engineering. And, and what you do when you squeeze all the efficiency out of the roadway and get as much out of it this way is you make the money go further. Third thing that makes this a great project is that we have a great West Virginia contractor. Uh, you've heard from Art King and Kana Stone here is a great contractor that does work in West Virginia. Uh, we're proud for that to be a part of the Governor's Roads to Prosperity program and we got a great bid here, so great work, Art. Uh, I will also say that I had the good pleasure of going to Art and Virginia King, his wife is here with him today, to their home office back in the Charleston area. They've expanded their operation there and have hired people, and again, that's what the governor had in mind with this program. Fourth thing about this project, uh, it was paid for with Garvey bonding. Our partner, Edward Stevens, talked about the, the partnership that DOH has. Garvey bonding uses your federal funds as the source of repayment for the bonding. We priced the bonds yesterday that pay for this project and got great interest rates. Uh, we got about a 3% effective interest rate, which is wonderful in this market condition. The market worked for us this time. That's well ahead of the cost of inflation, well ahead of the cost of deterioration. So again, it uh, shows the wisdom that Governor Justice had in the way that he structured this program. And, and so those are several reasons this is such a really neat project. But what I want to say there, particularly with the Garvey bonding, is Governor Justice had this vision about how do we invest in our infrastructure and, and the plan was while you had interest rates low like they are do wise investment wise investment while you're beating those cost of inflation uh, you can get a lot of work done so this for me as a transportation professional is wonderful but the governor was so wise in what he did because this is about so much more than just transportation it's about kick-starting our economy and taking care of West Virginia and so with that, is, it is my distinct honor to introduce my boss, the 36th governor of the state of West Virginia, Governor Jim Justice. Okay, everybody, y'all got to sit down. I'm going to sit down right here, too. Because I'm just going to talk to you like people from all across West Virginia talk to one another. I'm not going to deliver you a speech or anything, but I'm just going to, again, just talk to you the way I would talk to you. First of all, I want to thank all these people that are behind me, you know, Randy Dameron, you know, uh, Larry Hubbard, especially Donnie Wolford, and uh, with Boy Scout Troop 217 in Logan. Of course, Ed Robinson and Art King are great friends. Edward has done a wonderful job in working with us from the standpoint of the feds and, and just continues to do great work. Tom Smith is an incredible secretary. And all these people are putting in their licks. But out here with you, you have legislatures and you have people that have been are from the area that have uh, have tried so hard for so long to let things like this become a reality. And in addition to that, you've got many people out here that work for the State Highways Department and, and have worked, like Paul Maddox and, and, I, and, and many others. I don't know, Jimmy, I don't know where Jimmy is, but, uh, but okay, I see you down, Jimmy. I couldn't see you because of our camera from our office that does all this videoing and literally all this water just ran right off right on the camera and so I'll end up having to buy another camera. But, but nevertheless, a good day. But let's just, let's, let's just go back in the past just a little bit and just think. 
You had the wisdom here. We had the wisdom really all across this state. 73 percent of the people voted for something that was unprecedented. Now think about it. Just think about it for a second. You had the naysayers out telling you your taxes are going to rise if you do this. They've got to come up with more money. They haven't. You know, at the end of the day, you were told, well, Southern West Virginia isn't going to get anything. They never do, and they are. There's so many things that are components of this that from the interest rates, how, to put, how, how we put it together from the standpoint of the bonding, how we create thousands and thousands of instant jobs, instant jobs. You are also told all the work's going to go to out-of-state contractors, and we have the great Canal Stone here. You were told all the work's probably going to go to outside engineering firms because we can't do it here. And you heard Ed Robinson talk about doing something that was impossible beyond belief and did it in 99 days. You know, West Virginians can do a lot of great work. A lot of times we've been thrown under the bus by people on the outside, and that's why I said a million times over, we don't need to throw rocks at one another here. We've got too many people on the outside that have thrown enough rocks at us. We need to absolutely embrace one another here. You just think, almost 70 miles of Route 10, a road that really has plagued us with a lot of catastrophe, a lot of tragic things from accidents or whatever, a way to, to terrifically maybe improve the safety record. And not only that, a lifeline a lifeline to business and opportunity in southern West Virginia and jobs and growth that we need so badly. Just look around. You know, I see it every day that I'm in this area of the world. How in the world could we not recruit tourism? Our coal industry is doing better. I'm trying every way on in the sun with President Trump to make it even significantly more better. You know, every time I'm in this area, I get run over by 95,000 four-wheelers because they're everywhere, and they're doing good stuff, and they're from all over the country. That's good. That's goodness. And so, let me tell you, I could not possibly be more proud, more proud on the fact that uh, this was the vision that I had, believe it or not, in the primary. You know, this is exactly the vision. Because in the primary, I kept thinking, well, what can we do? What can we really do? I mean, we'd had six straight years of a cut budget, cut budget, cut budget. Now, what can we do to turn the state around? Well, you can go over here and level off a site and hope that somebody will come and build a factory. But if you just do that and hope they'll come, what if they don't come? What can we do? Our bonds were being derated. What can we do? Well, and then it just hit me, what would it cost? What would it cost if tomorrow we let every road project that was on the books, turned them all loose tomorrow? How many jobs would it create? Thousands, tens of thousands. How much economic impact would it bring to us? Over the years to come, it would bring who knows how many hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars of economic impact. What would it cost to do that? And then you know what we did? We figured it out from the standpoint of how to put certain things in buckets, and now you're in my arena. This is where I'm good and then figure out how to put it into an, uh, a financial instrument and then bond it and then have all the money tomorrow and make it all work tomorrow. Because at the end of the day, I was right up the road here just not, not long ago or maybe, maybe in a different direction. We were talking about a project that had been on the books for 18 or 22 years. You know, I see Richard and Mike here, and, I, and the Coalfield Expressways has been on the books for 
or been in the, pro in, in, in the works for 28 years, for God's sakes of living, I don't know how you survived it. I mean, I don't have any idea how you survived it. You must have been like 12 when you started on the project. But I really don't operate in those kind of worlds. You see, the only world I've ever been able to operate in is a 10-month world. I can see where I want to be 10 months from now. And 10 months after that, I'll, I mean, 10, 10 months from now, I'll readjust for 10 months. But you've never met a person in your life that's two things, more impatient than me. That's all there is to it. I don't have much patience. My dad, when I was growing up, he said this over and over and over. He said, son, don't confuse effort with accomplishment. I want you to achieve. I don't want you to try hard. I want you to achieve. And the other thing is just this, is as time goes on, you'll know that the other thing that I am, and I'm truly is just this, I love West Virginia. I love this great state and you, not as a politician, I love you and this great state and I want nothing for this job except goodness for you. At the end of the day, that's it. That's the end of the story. You've got an impatient person that's in love with West Virginia. And that's just it. And so, nothing could make me more proud than to be here and get a shovel full of, I'm not sure what that stuff is. <laughs> it doesn't look like coal, and it doesn't look like sand or dirt, so I'm a little worried about that. But, uh, but nevertheless, uh, Nothing can make me more proud. I see a big man standing right back here, Paul Hardesty, who's a wonderful friend and does wonderful work in the area and loves kids and thinks he's a good golfer, but he sucks at golf. <laughs> you know. But nevertheless, uh, you're great friends. You know, uh, I could never thank you enough. Really and truly, uh, you've made my life. You really have, not as your governor, but you made my life. You know, I, I, my grandparents grew up, or my, I'm sorry, my, yes, my grandparents grew up just down the road here a little ways at Cyclone and Copperston. I played in a coal bin a lot, a lot, a lot of times growing up. Grandparents on one side of my family never had indoor plumbing. I owe everything I have to West Virginia and the goodness that you are. So God bless you and thank you for having me. It's a good day. Thank you, Governor Justice. Thanks for those kind words. Well, now we're gonna take some photos featuring Governor Justice on the center shovel. Jimmy, I need you to come up if you would, get in this first photo. We're gonna rotate some folks through so, gentlemen, if you'll join us downstage at the shovels, we'll, uh, we'll take some pictures. And thank you for coming, ladies and gentlemen. Remember, when you leave, you're headed north, you'll be traveling through a work zone, so don't speed, okay? Thanks for being here.
like you throw some good flowers with this stuff. We're doing this again? Yeah. One more time? Y'all ready? 